What is the best way to experience Earthbound? It may seem obvious which versions would be best to play, but this question actually has many more answers than one might think. So today, I'll be telling you about the many official and fan versions of Mother 2. So what is the best version of Earthbound? Is it Earthbound for the calculator? Yeah, similarly to Mother 3, someone attempted a remake of Earthbound for a TI-80. Back in 2011, Starman.net user Abaddon started work on Earthbound Calculator Edition. This trail, as is to be expected, ran cold though, with the last update on the project being on March 15th, 2011, about a year and a half after it was announced. All that was ever seen from the project were these three screenshots, though another user by the name of Colin pitched in with some of their own recreations of sprites. Abaddon reported he completed several more sprites and maps, but these were never seen. So yeah, probably not the best way to experience Earthbound. Well, how about Earthbound for the calculator? Yeah, the attempts to have a playable Mother 2 on a calculator didn't end there. In 2022, 11 years after Abaddon's attempt at a recreation, Reddit user Hildebot posted a fully playable emulation of Earthbound running on their TI Inspire CX2. Though this version lacks any audio, as the calculator doesn't have any speakers. And really, what's the point of playing Mother 2 if you're not going to hear all those sick tracks? Of the official releases of the game, the original Super Nintendo version may seem like the clear winner, but I actually somewhat beg to differ. The SNES or Super Famicom versions, at the end of the day, are the most true versions of the game out there, but the Wii U, SNES Classic, Switch Online, and 3DS ports all made some small changes that I would consider worth looking at. All of these versions made slight alterations to some PSI animations by adding a blur filter during select ones, likely done to avoid any potential seizure-inducing flashes of light. This was likewise also done to select cutscenes, most notably Car Painter's PK Thunder. Some might complain about this changing the intended look of these effects, but I'm willing to bet a toy wasn't setting out for a Porygon episode across Japan when he conceived them, so it's an obvious pass from me. Select lines were also modified for these releases, with references to TV screens and BH Perkle's mention of <coughs> wet pants changed. These changes again don't bother me. A big mechanic introduced in these versions is the ability to save state, an ability previously never seen in gaming. I'm not for save scrubbing to make it so you never lose, but using them to easily save your progress anywhere and to manipulate RNG so ultimate equips drop without having to risk overleveling to the point there's no challenge are welcome additions to me. The Wii U and 3DS versions are sadly no longer available as of 2023, and while the SNES Classic version is great, the system's tough to come by at an affordable price, so of what's commercially available, I'd say the Switch port is a great choice. Many of these core game differences were made for the GBA port of the game, Mother 1 Plus 2, which is HOT GARBAGE. I won't get into my whole hate tirade on this version now because we all know it's not good, so let's just look at the revisional differences. Many of the text changes were originally made for this version of the game, and some of them are only present in this version. For example, at the library in the original, when you get the map, the librarian explains to press X to open it, but here it's altered so she vaguely tries to explain its map to the start button instead. Other than that, the only notable revisions are the corrections of some typos, such as when a bellboy incorrectly states that the zombies have left Tucson instead of Threed. The changes made in this sense aren't major or anything, but overall this version blows. Do whatever you need in order to play an actual port of the SNES version, even if by shadier means. There are plenty of options when it comes to emulating the game, which for legal reasons I will state I am NOT endorsing, but simply reporting exists even in browser emulations, which are great if you want to constantly randomly lose your progress. Emulation for it isn't even close to being limited to running on a computer though. For example, it can run on a PlayStation Portable, as demonstrated by many, or on a phone. Now if you're playing on a telephone, you will never in a trillion years experience the film. You'll think you have experienced it. It's a, such a sadness that you think you've seen a film on your fucking telephone. Get real. How about if you don't want to play it? You're just too busy and can't fit a JRPG into your schedule. What's the best way then? Is it watching a long play? Is it watching the recap in the theater in New Pork City? Is it only playing Mother 1 and 3 and just trying to piece it together from there? How about just watching the credits of the game and trying to figure it out through the Photoman's pictures? 
While I would highly suggest playing the game for yourself, even if it takes a while to complete, there are still some options for a spectator approach. There's plenty of great Let's Plays out there. Steven Plays the series has plenty of trivia and personal anecdotes. Nintendo Capri Suns is enjoyable and is very early YouTube core. But if you're not going to play the game yourself, I'd argue the next best way to experience Earthbound is through Chugga Conroy's 2018 Let's Play. This series is great and he really puts his all in, and succeeds, at telling the game's story to the viewer. His 2008 Let's Play is also fun though. Now, if anyone says anything about the graphics, you know, seriously saying the graphics aren't good for Super Nintendo, I'll falcon punch you, honestly. There's also tons of fan versions aiming at improving the story and gameplay experience. I can't comment on the quality of Mother Squared as it's still in development at the time of making this video, but it seems to be shaping up nicely. Straight up playing Mother 2 is objectively the most faithful experience you can have if you're emulating or playing the original version, but sadly with the game being in Japanese, the language barrier simply prevents newcomers from attempting it. Enter Maternal Bound. This is a fan hack spearheaded by Shadow1333, which aims at rescripting much of the game in order to be as faithful to the original one as possible, with uncensoring many moments and restoring other changes to accommodate the contemporary lack of Mother 1's international release. Before describing the changes, I want to bring up that this hack has been seceded by updates, Maternal Bound Redux and PK Maternal Bound Omega, which more greatly expound on the already amazing original release. In addition to the patches themselves, they also have sub-patches such as Mother 2 1 to 1, which very directly translates the script, and Rated M, which restores some more… saucy material. Maternal Bound additionally has options to restore sound effects that were changed in localization, such as the more violent smacking sound heard from Porky's father. It restores text graphics from Threed back to its original name, Threek, Ness's original sprite and magicant, Porky's name, and even Threed's hidden NPCs that don't appear due to a glitch in the original's programming. The absolute madmen! Shadow One and his collaborators Tragic Manor, Chili Fees, John Enigma, and many others created probably the best restoration patch for Mother 2, and are true legends in the Mother community for their efforts, right up there with people like Tomato, GG Fan, and Cody Nocolo. Oh, and if all of this wasn't enough, Shadow One also created faithfully recreated and translated labels for reproduction cards for both patches. Absolute king. If you're looking for the elusive, open-world Earthbound experience, there's PK Scramble, a much more widely expanded version of Chaz's original Earthbound randomizer. PK Scramble lets you have a ton of customizability in designing your ideal randomizer, including shuffling key items to be able to do a key sanity run, which is quite fun. The most interesting thing about this patchmaker is it makes the game open-world as a result of shuffling key items, so you're not eternally trapped in Onet, truly the breath of the wild of Earthbound experiences. Honestly, this is loads of fun, and the only thing I can think to add is being able to make it so things aren't random. I know that probably sounds astonishingly stupid, but I think it'd be so much fun to just make it so the game is open world without randomizing item locations, so a player could begin their adventure in pretty much any town or city they want to and truly be able to complete sanctuaries and unite the party in any order they want, with some enemy scaling of course. We're probably still a little ways away from that being possible, but I think it'd allow for a really fun way to experience the game for seasoned players. For now though, the randomized experience is still really fun. Have you ever looked at Earthbound and, like, some sort of idiot when, this game's ugly? Well, there's a DOS-style text adventure version of the game made all the way back in 2009 by Rufus and EB++, and can be patched to work as a hack. Not a one-to-one -one recreation, more so an Earthbound-inspired game, but it's neat. Also not a recreation project, but Zorkbound is another neat one of these that acts as a little haunted mansion exploration. There's also this one. We're not going to discuss this one. There's also a choose your own adventure book that was officially licensed, but we'll go over that another time. Over the years, a couple fans have even made some board games based on Earthbound. This one was made by a mother fan named Kyosuke, who used it as a way to teach English to Japanese school kids when he worked as a teacher. It's cute. He even went ahead and added several hidden Mr. Saturns, magic butterflies, and other things throughout. The object of the game is to find food in all of Onet's trash cans, with each one numbered. Once they've landed on one, the student would ask the teacher to search for a food card in the trash can, which were big flash cards on a board with food cards behind them. They'd pull one out, then they'd have to say the name of the food in English. Players can also run into other players, in which case they'd have to play Sean Ken Pone, with the winner taking one of the loser's food cards. 
This board game was an expansion on a card game Kyosuke initially made for his class, which was pretty cool. He made all these Pokemon-esque cards with earthbound enemies and characters on them, as it was a monster battling game. Some incredibly based kids even knew some of the characters, mostly Ness from Smash Brothers. The Earthbound Central article, which is sadly now lost media, nor his live journal post include the rules anywhere though. So, through the help of my friend and Banjo Kazooie tuber Malfazura, we were able to track him down and just ask him. He couldn't remember the rules exactly, but essentially each player would get three cards, then approach another player. The two players would then have a short conversation that they'd learned that day in class, then battle with one of their cards. Each player would then blindly choose one of their opponent's cards for them to have to use in battle. Each card has an attack and life value. From here, basically you'd subtract the attack value from the other card's life value, and then the player with the lowest life value after the subtraction process lost. After this, each player finds another person to approach, presumably until they run out of cards. Simple, but neat. Huge thanks to Kyosuke for explaining the game to me, and I highly recommend checking out his album Boss Battles for the Soul. It rocks. One step further, backwards? Some fans even came up with a pen and paper Earthbound RPG, and D&D Wiki even has some pages for helping to include PSI moves and Mr. Saturns as spells in a race in your own campaign, respectively. And mother-based D&D campaigns were decently common back on Starman.net, so it's fair. Another cool Earthbound experience that's easily accessible are a couple of VR videos on YouTube, which are just these little videos where you're in battles with enemies and even Gygas, which is terrifying in 360. Similarly, many people have made Minecraft maps recreating Onet you can find pretty easily, and if that's not enough for you, you will likely be able to just straight up emulate Earthbound within Minecraft at some point with the way things are headed. How about Earthbound in Flappy Bird? How about Earthbound Cart? How about Earthbound Tower Defense? Still not enough? I have some suggestions of my own. How about Earthbound the Cootie Catcher? Earthbound the Tiger Electronics Game? The Wrist Game? How about an Earthbound D-Make for the Atari 2600? Or a port for the PlayStation 1? Earthbound for Game & Watch? No reason to stop there. Earthbound for the Leapster? We've already ported Mother 3 to it, why not? Dreamcast? Game Boy? In Mario 64? The possibilities are endless. Can't forget about the Earthbound demo you can play in Smash 4. Oh yeah, this is definitely the way to play it. This demo was actually in Brawl, but only the Japanese version, as this was before Earthbound finally slipped onto Virtual Console on the Wii U. Weirdly enough, this version actually has a revisional difference. Originally, Master Barf would say, get covered in puke and die, to the party when challenging them, but this was changed to suffer until you vomit for Mother 1 plus 2, which in turn was retained for this version. This is so baffling to me, because there is no way whatsoever anyone could ever reach Master Barf in this 5 minute demo, let alone the tutorial. This is so weird, because this change was made for the GBA version, which has nothing to do with the programming and scripting for the original SNES version, so why was this change even made? You might say, oh, maybe a Virtual Console version release was planned for the Wii at some point, but the Virtual Console release we eventually did get changed the line further to get covered in me and suffer. What the hell is up with this version? Smash has its own ways to experience Earthbound outside these demos even though. As a stage, playing Ness's ultimate classic mode backwards, nothing but possibilities. For all the hardcore classic gamers out there, how about Earthbound the Arcade Machine? Back in summer 2015, Starman.net and Fangamer organized and hosted the Camp Fangamer event in Tucson, Arizona, a weekend-long Earthbound-themed convention. One of the events at the convention was a hack called Earthbound Reshuffler that was streamed that entire weekend with proceeds going to charity. This Earthbound Reshuffler is what was loaded onto this arcade machine, remixing the enemies, their stats, NPC sprites, names, the whole randomizer deal. Critics called it sacrilege and other things that didn't make any sense. The cabinet was able to be played by any of the attendees. There was also this one that was available at another Camp Fangamer event, albeit less elaborate. That year they also had Mother 3 and Earthbound Beginnings machines as well, and nothing else of note. At all. It doesn't seem we know for sure what ended up happening to the initial arcade machine after the event, though I'm willing to bet it's kept at the Fangamer offices. Either way, we need to find out where it is for sure so that I can find it and have it. The wall art on it is amazing, and I'm sad that we don't seem to know who created it. If you're out there watching this, know your work is still being appreciated, and that I want it. 
There's also the Earthbound Arcade machine. This was completed over the course of about 8 months in 2019 by Ryan Connolly, who assembled, wired, and hand-painted it all on his own. If that's not impressive enough, Ryan wasn't even trained in any of this, learning everything about the process primarily through YouTube tutorials and Reddit threads, with the hardest part being waiting for the best weather to paint it in. The final product plays much more than Earthbound though, with him saying it probably holds more than a thousand games. My only question is, Ryan, how much do I need to pay for you to make me one? This is the crowning jewel of esoteric ways to play Earthbound, which means it's mandatory I have one. Please! My favorite version of Earthbound though has to be this version on Scratch. Welcome to Earthbound on Scratch. Let's try it out. I promise once it loads, this is this is amazing. Alright, let's do this. Uh Earthbound for PC, y'all. It's finally here. Oh, that's how I remember. Oh. You ever just sit up on your roof a little bit? I get it. You know what? I actually don't want to go that way. Let's let's head let's head towards town. <laughs> oh. Oh, gotcha. It's like I'm experiencing it for the first time again. How do I leave? Oh no, am I meteor locked? This is my home now. Maybe the best version is the audio drama experience. Not that that exists, but you could just listen to the OST or play every song from it on Guitar Hero. Hell, play the game with a Guitar Hero controller. Are you really about to tell me you haven't experienced Earthbound in the way Atoy envisioned it when he painted the layout of the monkey caves on the walls of... a cave? That is Earthbound on cassette tape. But really, I'm just kidding about all this. As long as you're playing a port of the SNES version and not the GBA version, you're most likely in the clear to have a great experience playing Earthbound. Or just do what everyone else does. Don't play it and say you did.